Hi everyone and welcome to the first Crawford Cat Chat. My name is Sarah Harris. I'm the director of temporary staffing and I'll be your moderator for today's call. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A panel to send them in. We will also be sending out a survey link at the end of the Crawford Cat Chat and the first person who is going to be able to answer all the trivia questions in the survey will receive a, par a prize. Today I'll be moderating the discussion with two speakers and I'd like to introduce them. First, we have Griff Rogers, president of Crawford Catastrophe Services. Griff has been with Crawford for 19 years. His positions have ranged from service center manager for the New Mexico, Georgia and Alabama service centers to assistant vice president and vice president of the Southeast region. Griff's background consists of multi-line claims handling, operational management, business development, performance management, and account management within the insurance industry. Also joining us is Robert Jett, Chief Privacy Officer for Crawford & Company. Bob joined Crawford & Company just over 14 months ago and presently serves as Chief Privacy Officer and Lead IT Counsel. Bob currently also leads Crawford's Global Incident Response Team for COVID-19. He has more than 25 years of experience as a legal advisor and in-house in -house counsel with multinational organizations in the medical device and financial services industry. Thanks to both of you for joining me today. Before we get into the questions, I just wanted to turn it over to Griff to give just a brief introduction and overview of Crawford's missions and, and mission and values. Hey, thanks, Sarah, and welcome everyone. We're very glad to have everyone join the first edition of Crawford Cat Chats. We hope to bring you many more of these, uh, so look forward to it, and we look forward to continue to see you on these in the future. Very quickly, I wanted to speak to the mission of Crawford and Company and the core values we hold. Our mission is restoring and enhancing lives, businesses, and communities. Our core values as a company are built around one single word, and that's restore, and this includes respect, empowerment, sustainability, training, one Crawford, recognition, and entrepreneurship. Each of you play a part in living out this mission and these values with every claim that you touch. Thank you for all that you do, and we look forward to seeing you in the near future servicing our clients' needs. Also, thank you for participating in the first edition of Crawford Cat Chats. Thank you. Thanks, Griff. Now I'd like to turn it over to Bob for some insights on how Crawford is responding to COVID-19. Bob, welcome. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Th thanks, Griff. Uh, and thank you all for attending and inviting me to uh, to speak. Um, obviously, it's been very <laughs> it's been very exciting, and we've been very busy. Um, uh, as everyone knows, Crawford is a global company, so part of our response and uh, the impact that we've seen <clears throat> has been across the globe. So obviously the virus started in Asia and so we started to look at uh, how the impact was happening with businesses uh, in Asia specifically for Crawford businesses in Asia and then as it traveled into Europe and then eventually into the United States and Canada here uh, we were able to leverage the knowledge we gained and the things we learned about how to respond uh, and manage the businesses and manage expectations um, as well as basically just to look at business operations overall uh, as things have sort of moved forward from there. Um, the key the, the key for us has been um, looking at our pandemic response plan so that we Crawford does have a pandemic response plan and this was a part of our overall business continuity plans uh, because of the lines of business for Crawford each uh, business line has a business continuity plan and in some cases the business continuity plans are very local to the country. Obviously the larger countries have much more sophisticated uh, and very detailed uh, business continuity plans to talk about processes and protocols. Um, one of the key steps and one of the key things that we have kept up uh, as an important feature of our plans altogether has been employee uh, health and safety is the number one issue that we have focused on which is we want um, it's important of course to maintain our essential operations and providing critical services to our clients but it's also important that the people that we have uh, operating and supporting those essential operations and 
providing those services, uh, stay safe, stay healthy um, in the process. So that's been key. Um, part of our process too was to establish a pandemic um, and a global incident response team. Uh, several functional areas we brought into that response team so that we could uh, make sure that we were properly looking at communications, properly looking at operational impacts, um, and keep those moving forward. The other part of that too was obviously making sure that we understood the threat itself. So we had a lot of threat assessments that were going on. Uh, we were assigned people to follow what the World Health Organization was advising, uh, what the National Health Service in the UK was advising, and then of course what the US Centers for Disease Control, the CDC were advising. Um, with regard to that. So part of the, the ongoing task for the incident response team was you know, looking at disease surveillance, workforce protection and management. How are we managing our supply chain? You know, what are we doing with regard to travel? And then obviously office access and restrictions. And then ultimately as we moved into the latter phase where we, are, we all find ourselves today is you know, quarantine. Um, so part of that we looked at and created a tracking mechanism to be able to look at disease progression, uh, individual country uh, guidances and responses by the public health organizations, by individual governments, and then also looking at how do we then translate those into communications, prevention, and containment for the workforce, which would include employees and, and, the, and the adjusters. Um, Communications was key, uh, and we basically have implemented the uh, cleaning guidelines initially for offices where we were having people come into the offices, and then of course, educating people about social distancing, uh, and then the proper protocols with regard to whether masks were required, um, say hand sanitizer, washing your hands. Um, we've also, as many of you seen, and along with other companies, we have implemented a restriction on non-essential business travel. The reason I mention that is one of the great things that we were able to accomplish with a lot of management help was to make sure that the services we provide were categorized as essential services. Particularly in the United States, this was key uh, as many of the shelter in place orders or the work from home orders uh, were focused on non-essential businesses. And so obviously having the capability to make sure that we were identified and the services we provide or identify as essential services was key to be able to continuing to operate. Um, some additional things we've done have, have obviously been to put quarantine protocols in place, self-isolation protocols, and then obviously implementing our work from home for the employees that were based in offices, which included uh, rolling out some additional video meetings and teleconferencing, one of which we're using today to make that available to everyone who can actively join that. Um, that's sort of where we are today as we um, as we're looking at that. Part of the impact, I think just a couple of things to leave you with would be that, you know, the clients were very key. We focused on working with management and the client executives and account executives that we have throughout the company to make sure that we were giving the clients updates. Uh, we created an FAQs. We created um, some great online material and some great webinars that we offered out to clients to make sure that we were passing along information that we got and we were learning about uh, as it was happening so that the the clients were as well informed as we were and sharing as much information as we could. Uh, we're fortunate is that we have not officially closed any of our offices. The offices really are vacant, I would say, uh, because of the government orders with regard to moving people into a work from home or a shelter in place um, response. Um, that's all the updates I had in terms of impact. I mean, the impacts are ongoing. Uh, we'll start to turn the corner now, I'll mention in terms of the next phase, I think of the impact is how do we start to look at uh, recovering and uh, transforming the business back from where we, we, we put it in terms of the work from home mode and the shelter in place as those uh, governmental orders and the updates come through. Uh, we'll be obviously looking at the impacts there and adjusting. Thanks very much, sir.
Awesome, thank you, Bob. And thanks for giving us an idea of how the global pandemic is impacting Crawford and then also how Crawford is responding yeah. to the, the pandemic. We did get a question in the Q&A from Ben Mandel, and his question uh, for you, Bob, is does Crawford have any information that we might not be aware of that could clue us into which areas this virus is most likely to be encountered? We don't. Th that's a really good question. We are trying to use to utilize some. I mean, one of the fortunate things with um, Crawford is that we we do get um, claims related to virus outbreaks uh, through the broad spire uh, business line and through other interactions with our clients. Um, tracking that information <laughs> is tough. Um, so a lot of people I'm not aware of a database that we have available just yet uh, that would allow us to track the virus outbreaks. Uh, we are working on that, uh, Ben, and so hopefully in the future we'll be able to provide that either through partnership with a uh, third party or we'll develop that ourselves so that we can <clears throat> let people know if there's a heightened risk or if there's an area that we want, uh, that we have some concerns about sending people into. That, that would be in line with our health and safety mission. Great, thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, Griff, to you, um, uh, we do have a question. Uh, could you give us an idea of what service offerings Crawford continues to provide during the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely, Sarah. Uh, great question and, and glad to answer it. So really three areas come to mind for me, and that's uh, our business interruption program, uh, contract connections decontamination program, as well as just uh, remote claims management in general. But uh, starting with our business interruption program, we uh, we actually have a very large team of commercial adjusters handling multiple multiple commercial carriers. Uh, Tom Carson's is actually leading this group uh, in conjunction with our CFAS unit, which is our forensic accounting division, uh, to properly assess and evaluate business interruption claims uh, that are being presented from the pandemic. Uh, as for a contract connection, uh, we have over 5,000 contractors throughout the U.S., and many of them are specializing in the decontamination process, which is really focused on providing a safe environment while restoring the, the business back to the normalcy of the operation, which is limiting uh, any further business interruption potential that, that it might have. And then remote claims management uh, is, is something that includes our, our innovation of Ugo Look and True Look. Uh, as well as other desk options allowing alternative inspections connecting the insured with the adjuster without there being any kind of actual visit. Uh, we're actually piloting uh, two other applications right now um, that I'm sure many are familiar with as Hover and Claims Experience to also assist with our remote claims handling. Great, thank you. Uh, I also know Crawford recently hosted a webinar with Dr. Chris Woods on staying safe in the field in the midst of the global pandemic. Uh, what are some insights that the conversation had that could be useful also to our adjusters? Um, yeah, so Dr. Woods, while it, while it might come across as a bit elementary or basic in nature, uh, uh, Dr. Woods was emphatic about making sure that we wash our hands. Uh, this, this is something that we are really pressing on our field adjusters to do. Uh, we're encouraging them to do this uh, before they actually uh, inspect the property and also as they exit the property. And it's really twofold there. One, in the sense that we're making sure that they're protecting themselves from a, from a safety precaution standpoint, but also we really want to make sure that the insurer, the customer there is aware of it, that we're taking their account, uh, their safety being in, in account as well. So uh, uh, this is something that, that we're asking all of our field adjusters to do while they're displaying obvious, obviously social distancing as well. Uh, I, in fact, I would even encourage everyone that's on this call to watch his webinar. It's uh, it's on our web page, and I believe that there will be a link uh, tied to this presentation at the end that will direct you to it. And Bob, in addition to that, I know Crawford has some additional resources that, that we have posted. Can you talk a little bit more about where people can see those resources? Sure. Uh, as Griff mentioned, um, the and you'll see the slide up um, as a part of this presentation. Um, the the crawlco.com, there's a coronavirus information hub. Uh, there's a lot of resources available there, um, provides information. Obviously, the we rolled out very early on uh, in February, a coronavirus-info at us.crawlco.com email address. That is monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have a question, 
if you're not if you need to get some information or you need to get a hold of someone uh, obviously you can email us there there's always of course the the proper chain of of, of management uh out there uh, in your in your business operations but obviously if there's some information or some questions you have that we can answer uh, we do monitor that email address uh regularly um and I'm, we continue to put up as griff mentioned we continue to add to the uh, website, uh, updated information, webinars, uh, any type of documentation that we we produce, we try to get out there so that it's available for everyone. Awesome, thank you. We also did get some additional questions in the Q and A panel. Uh, the first one is going to be for you, Bob. Uh, are there any special considerations adjusters should be taking to, uh, or keeping in mind as they are deployed in the field in the midst of the COVID nineteen? For example, are there any special equipments that they should be using? Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, so I, I meant to mention too, as a part of the whole health and safety initiative that we undertook as a part of this innocent response, uh, we did design uh, actually working with with Griff and his team uh, a triage. We call we call it the triage protocol, and the triage protocol really consists of a number of pre-screen questions, as well as on-site guidelines. Uh, the pre-screen questions are really twofold. They're intended to protect uh, the adjuster. So if they're going on site with regard uh, to that, that they're um, um, making sure that there's no, they're not going to be exposed, or there's no additional risk for them when they're going on site. And then obviously too, it protects so that we know if there's uh, any issues there. Uh, and we can reschedule that when it is safe for the person to go back. Or as Gers also mentioned, we've got some facilities now to do remote uh, to do remote assessment uh, using some tools that are available. Um, the other part of the triage protocol was that we are now uh, to issuing what are uh, PPEs or personal protection equipment. Uh, you'll hear a lot about it in the news, uh, PPEs. PPEs that we've been issuing consist of um, masks uh, and hand sanitizer. Um, if you are are being deployed you know please make sure that you inquire about the ppe that should be being provided to you as a part of the deployment um, really want to emphasize that it's important that you follow the instructions in the ppe kits that you receive um, as everyone that has probably seen from the news uh, the equipment that goes into the ppe is in high demand both by healthcare providers by other uh, companies like us that are in the field providing services to people. Um, please follow the instructions. Uh, if you need additional PPE or if there's an issue with the PPE kits you get, please make sure you reach out and let someone know so that we can get you uh, a replacement for that. Um, that that's, <laughs> that's it on that. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Rob. Uh, so we've gotten a few questions for Griff as well. The first one is, um, Griff, could you give us some more information about what carriers Crawford is currently working with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sarah, due to somewhat of the sensitivity of identifying some client relationships, I can tell you that uh, of the top 20 carriers within the U.S., Crawford has a relationship with 15 of them. In addition to these, uh, we also uh, have significant uh, strong relationships with regional carriers as well that uh, provide a lot of deploy deployment opportunities. Awesome, thank you. And then the we've gotten a couple different questions, so it's, it's a twofold question for the next one. Um, so what deployment opportunities does Crawford have currently to offer to its CAT roster? And then as a, as a second question that's related to that, how do you expect large scale hurricane or storm deployments to change as a result of COVID-19? Okay. Uh, so the first thing regarding deployment opportunities, obviously uh, now's, a great, now's a great time to be asking such a cool question with regards to all the spring storms that we've seen. We've, we're seeing them in the Midwest, we're seeing them in Texas and even throughout the Southeast. So this is, this is definitely, we're seeing an influx of deployment supporting these needs. Uh, in addition to natural cats that everybody's familiar with, we also handle man cats as well, which is more environmentally based uh, that we have needs from that are sporadic throughout the year, as well as staff augmentation, which is where we're actually taking a team of adjusters and placing them in our client's office to support whatever needs that they have. That could be staffing needs, overflow needs, or, or obviously uh, times of uh, uh, 
hurricanes or, or any type of a weather influx that they might have. So, and then the last deployment uh, types of deployments that are common for us is actually our branch assists, or, or that's what we call it. Uh, this is when we're partnering with our regional claims offices to support uh, their daily needs. And, and the reasons there is really the same thing. It could be a staffing issue there where somebody's out of town, or it could be a situation where they're having some pocket storms and they need additional help. And then the benefit there is it's really allowing uh, our CAT adjusters, typically it's allowing them to work from their home as we're trying to part partner with them in the location where the need is so that they're not incurring any additional costs. They get to sleep in their bed as well. And it's also a great learning opportunity for our new adjusters to develop that relationship and that workflow while process as well. Um, can you repeat the second question, Sarah? I'm sorry. No worries. How do you expect large scale hurricane or storm deployments to change as a result of COVID-19? Oh, good question. Very common question. So so that, that that is something that where a lot of our clients are actually asking us as well. Uh, fortunately, Crawford and Company is armed with a lot of different tools that we can use. One being we go look. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with our, our, our on-demand network, we have about 45,000 lookers throughout the U.S. that we can call on uh, should there ever be any needs in specific areas that we can rely. Uh, also through We Go Look is a self-service application uh, called You Go Look where we can actually partner with um, the end user, the insured, uh, so that they can assist us in providing us uh, photographs, uh, measurements, in some cases, it allows us to actually triage, triage losses to uh, a larger skilled adjusters as well. So, um, and in addition to contract connection, we can actually turn them off, uh, turn them on as well to assist with these inspections in times of need. And it's really what we're seeing uh, is really supporting that uh, that desk adjuster as well. So uh, the, they will be assisting the claims process and making sure the estimates are prepared and, and the, the reserves are properly noted, notated as well. So. Awesome. And speaking of desk adjusters, the next question is, do you expect a strong increase in business interruption requiring more commercial adjusters? And then as a second part to that question, is Crawford going to be off, going to offer training for adjusters without commercial experience? Uh, absolutely. So so yeah, absolutely to both of those questions. So we, as I mentioned earlier, Tom Carson's is actually uh, already has a team in place right now that's supporting business interruption needs. Uh, we, we have uh, generated a lot of success and a lot of uh, appreciation from our clients in this service offering that we're providing them. Uh, and, and unfortunately, within the client, within the environment today, there's a lot of businesses that are um, following these claims. So we uh, we uh, what started out to be one program for a specific client, we're seeing more and more carriers gain interest in, in, in utilizing our services, and we're adding staff uh, appropriately to this to support those needs. Um, with regards to uh, training for adjusters without commercial experience. Uh, absolutely as well. We are, we are looking into some future dates where we, we can uh, bring those adjusters on. Um, obviously, there, there, there's, there will always be a growing need for that commercial skill set, and we definitely want to make sure that our, our current roster is moving in that direction should there be a need just to support our clients. Uh, the, the same there. Yeah, and I also wanted to mention that we do a, a commercial training class at our CAT conference every year, and so that's also a great time to do some commercial training with Crawford. Thank you, Sarah. Our next question is, what can adjusters do to get deployed with Crawford? Uh, and I'm going to take that, that question for myself. Um, so we did launch Renovo uh, back in, in 2018, and that's our adjuster deployment platform. Uh, the deployment platform is made so that you can, as an adjuster, go in and update all of your information in, uh, in the platform itself through the app or the desktop so that you can provide that inf information as real time as possible. Uh, and we just recommend to go in and update your profile uh, every so often so that we can have all the accurate information on what deployment experience you do have, any type of expertise changes, updated resumes, as well as any type of new certifications that you've acquired over the year. We also are, uh, we launched an I want to work button so that you can do that directly from the app um, and you can log in and it's the, the bright green button in the middle of uh, the app when you get there and just click it and it lets our deployment staff know that you are ready and available for deployment uh, right then. It stays active for two weeks 
And then after the, uh, that two week time period, you just go back in and click it again. So it, it's a great tool just to let us know immediately that you are available and then we can match you up with any type of deployments that do come in that meet your skill sets that you do have. I also wanted to mention that we are looking uh, actively for people who do have a New York's General Lines license, uh, rope and harness, as well as uh, exact certifications. Uh, so if you do have those, please go into your Renovo profile and go ahead and update that so that we're aware of that. Uh, and our next question is also, uh, who can the adjusters talk to uh, for any deployment opportunities? And that is uh, our deployment staff. So you can reach out to them anytime at our 800 number, which is 800-221-3509. So you can reach out and anybody on that, that resource deployments team, they can help you out with any uh, any questions that you have or just to update your your profiles as well if you're not able to log into Renovo. So I don't see any any questions, um, so uh, that concludes our, our cat chat today. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined and, and also those who who gave questions to be answered. We definitely appreciate that as well. Uh, please be on the lookout for any upcoming cat chats. And also don't forget that we will be sending out a survey in just a few moments in the Q&A panel portion uh, for everybody to answer some trivia questions related to our cat chat today. And the first person that will answer all of them correctly will receive a prize. Keep an eye out for the next uh, Crawford cat chat invitation and thank you for everyone who joined today.